Bill Gates said, I will always choose a lazy person to do a difficult job because a lazy person will find an easy way to do it. What's a real-life example of this? Story 1. I knew a guy who had a low-level data sorting job. He had several daily, weekly work responsibilities, including a bunch of reports that needed quite a bit of tweaking from raw data to finished products. But like I said, low-level. We didn't find out until way later, but he had set up macros for each of his major responsibilities where he could. Once set up, he'd just run the macros to do his work, but then he'd smartly hold off on delivering the reports until just a little before the deadlines. He'd hit every assignment and was seen as reliable. He also would complain about the workload so people would leave him with that work. I doubt he did a full hour of work a day after he set up what he did. Eventually, he left the job for one with better pay, but dang, did he work lazy. Also, he was smart not to reveal until the end, because had he told them about it, he would have gotten a pat on the back and would have been given a whole other workload, on top of maintaining those macros and other stuff. Dude milked the job, not the other way around. I know a guy who did this, but he revealed it. The company shared the macros with all the employees. It made everyone's life easier, but they also got an increased workload. The company made a lot more money, and this guy made none of it. He didn't even get promoted. That's why I haven't said a word. I did this, and who was the first one laid off in 2008 when the economy tanked? The dude who didn't do anything but maintain the completely automatic system. I got a call about two years later that the server I had set up crashed, and they couldn't recreate the process. I never returned the call, and guess who went out of business shortly after? Any good IT guy will find a way to automate his job so he can sit around browsing the internet. I left my last sysadmin job, and the next guy called me and asked how I was doing the work of three people. He was going through the daily playbook and was so far behind. I asked him if he was going through the manual playbook or the automated playbook, as I had left both on my desk. Evidently, my former boss had taken the automated one to do the work in the interim and never told the new hire about it. Bingo. The fact that you left two manuals is very kind of you, though. Story 2. Worked in a local adult education center. One of my main tasks was to make calculations about how many people enlisted for a course, how many of them got discounts, unemployment, etc., how many men, women, ages, etc. That was needed to calculate upcoming course fees, and that was my only work there, and I hated it. This was in the early 90s, so PCs were a thing in our offices, but I had no idea how to write a program or use a database to use this information. Lucky as I am, our center had an interesting policy. When you want to educate yourself, you can attend that class for free. And when it's during the work time, then this is work time, as long as my supervisor is okay with that. She was. So I spent three months studying database structures, scripting, coding, etc., I told my tutor what I wanted to do, and he helped me to write a script that grabs all necessary information from the course's database, copy that into another database, and then I went crazy and wrote code that was insane. I implemented what-if scenarios thanks to filters. In the end, I was able to do my work that needed six hours a day within 15 minutes. I mean, before that, it took, for example, an hour to have all the necessary information to have a how many unemployed single-parent women does it need to make the costs of that course even. I had everything back then. Now you want statistics on how many single parents disabled foreign women at the age of 80 to 90 are needed for the next two years to keep the ornithology course running? Sure, no problem. Clickety-click, done. After that, I started the PC in the morning, grabbed all the data, ran my script, was done within 15 minutes, and then read the book I brought from home. At the end of the day, I gave my supervisor several dozens of papers, statistics, predictions, etc., and said, that was a lot of work, and went home. My supervisor was super happy with me because I did so much more now and was super effective. Story 3. One of my favorite stories from you was the tale of the man who was too lazy to fail. I got fed up with handwriting itemized suborders at work, so I set up a spreadsheet that you can just fill out. Then I got tired of having more than one program open and not being able to search within and among those order sheets, at least not automatically or easily. So I'm having our FileMaker guy integrate it into our greater ordering and invoicing system. I was frustrated at the pointlessness of sorting a giant pile of paper invoices from an unpaid stack to a paid stack every month, so I just used the accounting software to keep track. I became so irritated with having to fill out a multi-page printed spreadsheet for every single order 
sometimes just one item, two pages in, and frequently there would be those pesky itemized suborders that I condensed the items into most used, put them all on one easy-to-read sheet, and encouraged my coworker to simply write out the more uncommon items at the bottom. Basically, I hate busy work, and paper invariably leads to busy work. I have tried to reduce the use of paper in our office, but have not been entirely successful. We have to have written order forms available, because sometimes the orders are coming in too fast to be able to type it all quickly and correctly, and have to keep some paper records for things like organic, FDA, and USDA audits. But all in all, I'd say my absolute hatred of filing has reduced busy work here by at least half. Story 4. I don't know if this is a true story, but it kind of fits your request. There was a manufacturing plant that made toothpaste. One year, for some reason, there ended up being an unusually high number of empty boxes being shipped out, so in order to stop that from happening, the head of the company hired a couple engineers to develop a system to catch any empty boxes, so they didn't get shipped with the boxes that actually had the toothpaste tubes in them. The engineers developed a system that, if the box weighed below a certain amount, the system would stop and a worker would have to go remove the box and start everything up again. The person in charge loved the idea and implemented it immediately. And right from the get-go, the number of empty boxes shipped dropped to near zero. The head of the company wanted to go see the system in action, so he went and visited the plant one day and noticed a huge fan right by the assembly line. Very confused, as it wasn't hot, he asked the plant manager why the fan was there. The plant manager said the workers were tired of stopping what they were doing to remove an empty box, so they just hooked up a fan to blow the empty boxes off the scale before the system recognized it was empty, and shut everything off. So laziness led to a more efficient and cost-effective plan. Story 5. My ex-boss gave me an Excel sheet, 124,000 rows Excel sheet. Had all the company customer data per row twice. In some of those duplicates, there was an error. She needed me to go over the list one row by row to check for mistakes and mark all the faulty entries I could find, through 124,000 rows. She wanted me to do that using the arrow down key and my mouse. I thanked her, I sat down, invested half an hour into Google, copy-pasted some parts of this formula, then some parts of that. Finally, I had figured out the formula. I double-clicked the tiny rectangle so that the formula gets applied in all rows, worked like a charm. I stood up, got myself a coffee, and talked to some colleagues. Then I went to my boss. She had anticipated that I would need three days for this task. When I was back less than an hour later, she thought I hadn't understood the task, or maybe a follow-up question. I will never forget the expression on her face when I told her I was done. There were six faulty entries. A year and a half later, I enrolled into computer science at university, where I will finish my undergrad this summer. Story 6 When I was in college, I had a job at an Italian fast food place with a reputation for its breadsticks. They came in frozen and needed a bit to thaw, so we'd take a giant 3 by 4 foot aluminum baking sheet, spread them out in a single layer with no spaces, and cover it with a plastic bag, then leave it sitting in the walk-in overnight. The next day, you'd have to get a pair of tongs and move each stick to a new tray, turning them over, then cover the new tray with a bag, and let them sit on racks for a couple of hours before brushing on the garlic butter sauce. This was tedious enough that you'd usually be ready to brush the butter on the first tray as soon as you turn the last tray. I was given this task for the first time one morning and just did not want to deal with it. I realized if I put the second tray upside down on top of the first one, then turned it over and took the first tray out, I got exactly the same results. Blew the boss's mind when I did the three-hour job in about 15 minutes. I was given a five-cent-per-hour raise. Story 7 Back in high school, a lot of kids used to walk through this park to get home slash go to school. A portion of the path went into the woods because it was just quicker than walking the actual trail. At one point in the walk through the woods, you had to go up this small but tedious hill. Nothing major, but it took like 10 seconds of hard work to go up it. You couldn't go around because one side was a small cliff to the creek below, and the other side had dense trees. One summer, a bunch of us got together and decided to just dig through that hill to make it flat. It took like 14 of us three good days to get through it. It was a hard three days, but it was definitely worth it. Save 10 seconds of hill climbing every morning and afternoon, 150 plus days of the year. And it wasn't just us, but hundreds of other kids who had the same party every day. Sometimes you need to put in a lot of work so your future selves can enjoy the easy way out. Story 8. My brother gave my oldest nephew $10 a week if he did all his chores without needing to be told or complaining. 
One day, he gets home early from work and sees the neighbor kid tosses a bag in the trash. He asks him what he's doing, and the kid says he gets five bucks a week to take care of a few chores. My nephew outsourced his chores. I tried doing that as a kid and got a slap on the back of the head. It was just my dad and me. We both hated doing the dishes, so they would stockpile. It got to the point where he offered to pay me $20 just to do them. Before I got around to it, we went down the road to my aunt's. I ended up offering my cousin $10 if he would come over and do the dishes. He accepted. I wasn't allowed to do that again. Outsourcing and child labor? These kids destined to be a Nike CEO one day. Nephew it. Check. Gotta start young. Story 9. When I worked in a graphics design studio as an intern, they mostly had me practice and do some basic stuff their head designers were too busy to do. One was a real estate ad. It had a few basic templates, but it was all kinds of scatterbrained. I would spend 5-10 to ten minutes trying to find the right layer for all the pictures and had to mess with way too much. So I made copies of the files and made one for each template. I labeled everything, made it so the images on top of each other wouldn't clip into the lower ones like the previous did, and so on. So you could be in and out of the template in two to three minutes. Showed my boss the difference, and he had this face of, well, shoot. He said the next day that if I was a graduate, he'd hire me because I was better than the people sending applications in. In short, I made an overly complicated slash unorganized thing the opposite, and my boss was actually sad he couldn't hire me. Story 10. Every year in the Canadian winter, power lines would fail due to the weight of the snow. It took many days to build up enough to break a line, so they employed a team to walk the routes and shake the poles to loosen the snow. One day, they saw a bear shaking the poles and realized that if they could get the bear to do it, they wouldn't need to walk the route. So they gave one guy a bucket of honey, and he'd walk the route painting the sides of the poles with honey to attract the bears. It worked for a few more years, but this still takes a lot of time to do. So then they had the idea of flying a helicopter along the route with a trained sniper with honey paintballs that he'd shoot the poles with. On its maiden flight, the helicopter passed the lines and the downdraft blew away all of the snow. The flights continue to this day, but without the sniper. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of this video and have a wonderful day. Story 11. I was a paid intern at a large company for one summer back home from college. My work 95% consisted of using SAP, importing to Excel, cleaning data, and generating reports, occasionally creating some tool someone needed. In the first two weeks after getting a hang of my responsibilities, writing all the Excel formulas needed, and basically automating 99% of my work, I was chilling. I went from actually working from 9 to 5 to maybe one hour tops a day. Finding, importing, cleaning, and reporting usually took hours, but with all the formulas, it took two minutes of clicking. I then helped the other cool intern get his stuff set up so we could both just chill. We could take two-hour lunches, paid for by the company, and nobody said anything because we were just getting so much more done than the other interns. Of course, I helped for special tasks when asked, but those were simple 20-minute tasks building something in Excel. Overall, it was the easiest slash most stress-free internship of my life. Story 12. An older company had a person dedicated to data entry, which boiled down to copying and pasting portions of data from text files into spreadsheets and formatting into a report. The person originally doing this job spent a full 40-plus hours a week doing it, but was not very computer literate. When they retired, the company hired someone with actual skills— the new hire convinced management to let her work remotely after getting up to speed on the job. The first week at home was spent automating the entire job. The remainder of their multi-year tenure with the company was spent doing whatever they wanted to, save the 10 to 15 minutes weekly to run their program and to answer the odd email here and there, all while getting paid full salary and benefits. They actually had to add in a few errors now and then to make it seem realistic. Story 13. When Carl Friedrich Gauss, the famous German mathematician and physicist, was in elementary school around 1784, his class was assigned the busy work task of adding all the numbers from 1 to 100, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, and so on. This usually kept the class quiet for half an hour or so. Seven-year-old Carl was sitting quietly with the correct answer, 5,050, while the rest of the class was just starting. So the surprised teacher asked him how he came up with the solution, he replied that he added 1 and 100 and got 101. Then he added 2 and 99 and got 101. 3 plus 98 equals 101, and so on. 
he realized there was a pattern of 50 pairs of numbers, with each pair adding up to 101, and 50 times 101 equals 5050. Story 14. Does Alexander and the Gordian Knot Count? A complex knot that, according to prophecy, was to be undone only by the person who was to rule Asia. And that was cut, rather than untied, by Alexander the Great. To be fair, imagine you're the priest, and this guy just cut your knot. And he's holding a very sharp sword, and has a large army outside. Would you dispute the legitimacy of his way of solving it? No, but I would roll my eyes very heavily. Probably sigh, too. Wasn't that the same dude who liked a guy living in a barrel? Yeah, the barrel dude was called Diogenes, who was a philosopher who was famous for founding the school of cynic philosophy. Story 15. The entire miscellaneous kitchen tools section at Bed Bath & Beyond. I don't need an avocado slicer, or a lemon squeezer, or an automatic chopper or dicer, but lazy old me definitely puts them to good use. Ironically, these things were not created for lazy people originally, but for people with disabilities, and also very busy restaurant owners. This. Unfortunately, a lot of these products have to be marketed like time-saving devices and convenience gadgets to justify production, which is what leads to a lot of the weird product memes. Like, sure, you can make fun of a little claw tool that helps you put on your socks without bending over, but elderly, ill, and disabled people sure are glad that tool exists. Story 16. Years ago, as a student, I got a job stocking shelves. Guys were carrying the heavy boxes, put them on the floor, and bend each time to pick up the items to put on the shelves. I was maybe a light 100-pound woman, and carrying the boxes was just killing me physically. So one day, I had an idea. I put the box on an old desk chair and rolled it around. No more carrying and no more bending. Funny thing is that instead of doing the same thing, most of the guys called me lazy and kept carrying the heavy boxes, just to prove how strong they were. Now they have special rolling carts to do the job. Story 17. Worked as a laborer at a nursery one summer. Daily tasks included manually watering 15,000 plants each day, put together a back of the napkin plan to build an irrigation system, and spent the next few weeks building it with some money from the boss. That system is still running 15 years later and does all the work now. I automated myself out of the job and had to find another eventually. A couple years later, I got my engineering degree. I'm convinced engineers are inherently lazy people that will spend a disproportionate amount of effort to make things easier. Story 18. My brother-in-law spent a whole summer trying to figure out how to fix his sagging deck at the lake, which he could in theory crawl under and jack it up. It would have been a tunneling project. It's a 60 by 60 area all along 2 by 6 boards. Massive. I sat there long enough with enough beer in me to come up with the idea of just cutting a square out on the sagging area about 3 foot by 3 foot, jacking it up, then re-screwing down the boards. He paints the thing every spring with a roller anyhow, so it's not like the square cut shows up. He thought I was a genius. I was just lazy. Story 19. At work I go through parts and apply two different kinds of tape and two different kinds of weave. I finally got the rhythm down, and now I do each part individually and apply everything at once. Everyone else goes through an entire order just applying tape, then goes through it again to do the weave. I asked to use the big table in the back of the shop, and just put all the tape and weave tools there, and do the parts all at once. Normal rate for an 8-hour shift is 1200 but I can manage 1800 in a day, going at a nice steady pace. Story 20 I worked goods in for an aircraft manufacturer as a summer job at university. Parts would arrive, we'd open them, and key in all the details into a terminal. That bit was long-winded. I discovered the terminal keyboard has assignable shortcuts, and set up a bunch of them for all the boilerplate, such that keying in an item was about six keystrokes. Saved myself and my workmate hours every day, which we would spend pranking each other, other warehouse staff, and staff at other sites. Story 21 I was working as a stock boy in a supermarket, and when we had to fill the milk cooler, people would bust open a 12-pack of milk cartons and put them in one by one. On my first day, I just placed the 12-pack in the cooler and cut the plastic off on one of the sides with my box cutter and yanked it from under it, and the look of the store manager and the other employee who was training me was pure bewilderment. From that day, everyone did it my way. Story 22 that Diogenes philosopher guy, he gave up all his possessions apart from a barrel and a small bowl, which he drank from. He was famous for jacking off in public, and when Alexander the Great visited him and asked him what he could do for him, 
Diogenes' response was that he should move, because he was blocking the sun. Story 23. Me. I automate stuff all the time at work to make daily routine jobs easier. I write manuals with screenshots with arrows indicating where to click or where to fill in what. Whenever I write a manual, I assume that whoever reads it is a complete idiot, so that whenever customers call for the same questions again, I just send them to the online manual I created. No need to type it out again by email or explain it again by phone. Story 24. It took me like three months, but I automated a data pipeline to extract data, clean it up, and spit it out in Excel or PDF format to one of our clients. I walked over to shoot the breeze with the lady who handles my client and gives me tasks, and she told me we make $40,000 off of them every month for that automated job. Frick, I need to go start my own business. Story 25. I was invited to my friend's yearly apple picking. It was a full day of apples and kids and filling a truck for cider. I'm lazy and suggested we make the process more efficient with tarps on the ground. We managed in two hours what historically took all day. We didn't even get to the picnic lunch. Essentially, I ruined apple picking. Story 26. I had a maths teacher that actively encouraged his students to be as lazy as possible, defining lazy as actively searching for ways to do as minimal work as possible. His logic was that the way maths is now, it could always be simplified and still work the same. Someone just needs to be lazy enough to find that. Story 27. Start of lockdown, my nine-year-old son was having worksheets emailed to complete at home. One day, I left him at the laptop doing his maths while I made some dinner with my three-year-old daughter, walked into the living room with his dinner to find him asking Alexa all of his math questions. Story 28. If I need directions, I'm not asking a man with one tooth. I'm asking a man with one leg, because he definitely knows the easiest way to get there. Yep, if there's a shortcut, that one-legged dude knows where it is. You won't be hopping fences either. Story 29. My greenhouse's watering system. I would spend an hour per day watering the garden, 30 hours per month. So for $50, I set up a PVC watering system in a few hours. Now I just turn on the spigot and watch while I smoke a joint. Story 30. The clerk was asked to bring 145 white papers into the office. He doesn't want to count the papers manually, so he printed 145 blank sheets and took them in. Story 31. I had to carry groceries into the house when I was a kid. I didn't want to make multiple trips, so I tied several bags to the belt loops on my pants to do it in one trip. Story 32. An engineer spent hours developing a program so they could start the coffee pot from their desk and not have to wait for coffee when arriving in the break room. Story 33. I'm doing it right now. Automated data cleaning in Python. My coworkers don't know about it, so something that takes me 10 minutes at most takes them 2 hours. Story 34. There's a repo on GitHub containing code based on scripts that were used by a tech employee that his coworkers discovered after he left the company. Story 35. According to Facebook parents, the effer that carved a sphere out of a stone block and rolled it instead of pushing it like the other students. Story 36. Walkie-talkie. In every job I've ever had, these things make your day far less labor-intensive if used correctly. Story 37. I plug clocks in at midnight, so they're already set. Trip the main fuse in the house at midnight to do all the appliances, too. Story 38. Eating dinner out of the pot so there's fewer dishes to wash. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.